and it's about I think it was three thou over or something like that. So it wobbles a little bit. And I drilled it. For threads. Then I drilled it for clearance. That you can see inside there. And then I've drilled it for the cap screw. And yeah, you know, it turned out alright, it's acceptable. This fate of of sorry. Um, yeah, so I bought it on this face here. So this like this hole is bored concentric to this face here, which is the only thing I've got to remember because when it goes up against the face of the bearing block, it needs to be parallel, and it isn't quite square. This isn't. I was a bit disappointed, so. This is the second one, and I made sure it is square. It has got around about a foul difference all around. And it is square. Very square. Very square indeed. Very happy with that one. So I'm going to do the same again, bore it, drill, counter drill, counter sink for the bolt to go in. And I think you'll agree that is perfect. I thought I might show the setup of how I'm doing the four jaw. So I've got the angle of the DTI in at that angle there, yeah. So clearly when the jaw comes up to that angle, that's when you want to be measuring it. And let's see, let's see if we get that back. right there. So that. Here's the run out. Put it in again. And obviously, if that jaw is high, you tighten it. If you can't tighten it anymore because it's over tightened, then you slack off the back jaw a little bit, go back to the jaw that's too high, and then just tighten it down a little bit. And you carry on doing that until you get it as good as that. So it's on, and is it on? It brings the old shaft with it. You can get it off. It uh, must have a slight taper in it, it's a bit harder to put on that way. But it still goes on. Might be a burr in there. And that is good. So now I just have to drill the hole through that side for the pinch bolt and then slit it. There's a bit more mess on there now. The three jaw chuck is back on and something got accomplished. Oh, yeah, I've got that. Yeah, that fits wonderful polished it now a little bit so it looks a lot better still a few teeth mark in it from the chuck I think I'm gonna leave them in for prosperity then I made this so that used to have this jingly washer affair on it and now it's got a little handle which I made for it one clamp is on, here's the other clamp, it is finished, but it's not as good as this one. That one's perfect, this one jiggles quite a lot. This one
Eight not Jago. Eight not Jago. It is pie fact. Absolutely pie fact. Whether I'm going to use that one on, on that side, I don't know. It'll look like that. And here is my amazing setup for doing this. Still haven't got the camera holder made yet. speed I could without hassling myself which was 10 hertz on the variable frequency drive in back gear I'm guessing that was around about 70 rpm but I've increased it up in back gear and it's at 18 hertz but it doesn't chatter and squeal like that which is what it was doing for a start and we're building up some serious amounts of squawk now and the hole is getting deeper so it is working I'm bringing you back. Just got a bit more oil in there. We are close to the end. It's about to break through into the bore. I've been periodically removing the blade, spraying the swarf to the side, applying the oil, and bring it back in again. Every time I've done that, it sounded so much better and cooked more silently this is what I've been getting way past the halfway point now there's a bit touch and go as you can see from the gap I think that first point when I stopped with you I think it moved but bothered it squealed a bit for about another short period of time after I've done that and then it's been plain sailing since I've been taking it out and putting it back in again and applying new oil and getting the swarf out of the way it doesn't like swarf going down it, down with it once you get a swarf built up you need to clean it up yeah yeah, I'm breaking through that side wall now oh yeah I can see it in my eyes, I don't know how good the video is going to pick it up. But I can see quite clearly it is going through that. There we go, you can see it now. So, uh, if it was cutting straight, it would be almost professional. It's a little bit dry down there now. Not a lot I can do about that. That is it. Yeah. Sweet. I want to just cut something else. <laughs> so trying to get it all the way through. There we go. It's not quite straight, but that's okay for me. Just for a little lock down here. There's the other one. I've got to do that now. 
So I'm going to see the mistakes I've made on this one. Try to make it a little bit better on that one. And we'll go from there. Now, it is on. I'm just holding it with a G clamp for the moment. It's just it's got a G clamp on it. This is going to be hard and steel anyway. So this will be mild steel. It'll be marred by the G clamp. This will be hard and steel. That'll be fine. It's not the best thing for doing. But the fact of the matter is, this shaft now, if I wanted to, it's pretty sturdy. It, I don't want to push it and then make it all slip and everything. But at the moment, it is pretty goddamn sturdy. All right, Just take my word for it. I can now operate this which I couldn't do before and they're not the smoothest because they haven't been used forever and the bars are a little bit rusted and then I haven't, there we go we'll get there okay so now the stops can be used as you can see I'll just tighten that stop up and I am just pulling up and it's moved a little bit, so yeah, we can move it, and you can see the clamp moved. I didn't want to do that. Now I have. There's probably going to be a scratch on the back there. Oh well. But as we can see, well, this one's a bit easier to move. This one is. I could set a stop somewhere now, and if I was auto feeding in or auto, but you know how it's tight that one is. If I was auto feeding in or auto feeding out. In, in, there we go. These stops will kick the auto feeds off. That's the idea. The other thing is, if I'm doing a manual feed, I can set these up and I can come up to the stop. I can just feed, you know, feed the crank. I've got it locked because I was doing some cutting. I can feed the apron up and down to the stops where I want them. So I can set them up for a start with a DTI gauge. DTI gauge. I can put that up here, I'll set up my stop and then get that out of the way because there's not a lot of room on this lathe for that until I make some kind of clamp for it. And I can use these as semi accurate stops. You're not seeing what I'm doing, are you? No. You're not seeing what I'm doing. I'm not clamping it up there, I don't know. But we'll try. I'll try and make it better. I'm having a break now. I'm going to try and make that hole in there better. It's a successful cut. It cut all the way through. Now all I've got to do is make the cut better. 